Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Max Moving Training Podcast. And today we're going to actually be meeting with Jay Burnham from Seven Figures Moving Academy. There's no introduction needed. This man has been known well over the internet and YouTube, but I'm going to let Jay tell a little bit more about himself. Yeah, um, I started uh, Seven Figure Moving Academy back in uh, 2016. I knew my moving career was coming to an end. Um, I wanted to create a legacy, so I started doing a bunch of videos online to help new and upcoming movers get up to the up to the level I was, which was making nearly one million dollars gross a year, um, because there was nobody in the in the industry that was doing it. And then, then shortly after, we had this guy from Arizona pop up, started doing it. And he's good, but he he started working on the mid level to the high tier guys, which is great. Because I my my legacy I wanted to create was create get a new batch of uh, movers in. I wanted to take somebody who didn't know anything about the business and get them started in a business and actually start making money. Because I felt there was a lot of room and we could uh, we could start we could uh, each help each other out and make a lot of money. And then everybody else and their brother decided they wanted to follow suit. So uh, my claim to fame is that I started everybody and their brother on this this tra uh, training. Dwight included. He used to be a member. Oh, he okay. used to be a member, and then he left. <laughs> he got all high and mighty, and then he decided to leave me. Well, you definitely post a lot of value. Um, and any, if anybody ever seen Jay's channel, he has probably well over, and I, I might be even fumbling this. Um, over well over two hundred videos easily on his yeah, channel. We're, we're we're nearly four hundred videos on on right now. Nice, nice. So it's definitely a lot of value. Um, and his thumbnails are definitely catchy, so you definitely want to watch them. Uh, um, so, uh, but as you know, um, today we're going to be going over a topic, you know, and we want to make sure that pretty much everyone is getting value out of these trainings. So, Jay, um, what did you want to go over today? Well, I thought we would talk about what happens after the move, especially with the marketing. See, a lot of people, especially new movers, they, they're a one and done mover. They, they get the job. They spend all this money to collect their name, phone number, address, email address, and all this stuff. They do the move. They do a great job. But then they're off to do another move somewhere else, somebody else, right? And hopefully they did a good job and something like three, four, five, seven years down the road, the guys come back and do another move with them. Um and that's, I think that's a shame because there's a way we can market to these people, right? And that can, can make us money from these people long after they're done using our services. So most, especially new movers and even, even the big movers, they're a one and done. They do a move, they're on to the next move. And they don't foster a communication cycle. They don't foster a relationship after the move. And I thought, there was a way we could actually uh, work on that and go over the 10 different failures that movers make after the move. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Let me uh, just pull up my document here so that I have it up in front of me. And then I can go over the thing so I'm not misspeaking here. Just give me one second while this loads up. Right. In the meantime, you could say something funny and, and, and stupid about me. <laughs> well, you know, he got us all on edge right now. Wait, wait to see what type of interested stuff he has, you know, because marketing is definitely essential. And I talk about it a lot, especially with my students and my mentorship program, as well as um, I just did a segment in our Facebook group going over how to get the customers to the door. But building that repeat referral type business is is everything because hey, less money you got to spend ultimately. Right. Yep. So, okay. We're... So did you um want to talk about your, um like, what's the difference between, uh, I guess, the paid and the uh, non-paid Facebook group? Well, the free group, you only you only get access to the Facebook group. If you do the paid membership, you get, there's an exclusive off, 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 the off the Facebook group that we have, plus you get all access to all the, the you get a bunch of free documents um, and, and, and paperwork that you would need to start your moving business or build your moving business up. 
Um, and so that's, you know, so you get a lot more stuff. Plus you have direct access to me via, um, uh, you know, um, text messages and, and stuff. All right. I have it up now, so we'll go Great. over. So, you know, moving is done um, as, you know, movers do one and done, as I was saying, right? And the problem is, is they, they go and they do a great job. They might get a testimonial and then they put the testimony on Facebook or YouTube. If they're smart, they would do that. Um, if they're not, they would just grab a, a, a testimonial and hopefully someone leaves a review. But no one ever does anything after the thing to build up um a relationship, build up a relationship. They don't do marketing after the the job is done. And I think that is such a shame. And there's actually 10 failures that all movers make, almost every single mover. I, I doubt that every single, there's a moving company that does all 10 of these different things. And I'll go over the first one. The first one is there's no attempt to book the next move or side job, like trash removal, yard cleanup, house cleaning, dog setting, you know, whatever it is, there's a, there are adjacent businesses that we can be doing for our customer long-term, like uh, lawn lawn care and stuff like that. Um, even if we're not doing that as a business, we could then sell that lead or give that lead to somebody that could give us a kickback. And I'm going to talk more about that later on, right? Um, so there's no attempt to actually sell the next service. So um, there's, you know, no one goes after the job's done, go now, is there any other move that you have, or do you know somebody that's going to move here in the near future? There is no, there's no attempt to do that. Right. The second failure is there's no attempt to enroll the customer in a monthly auto pay service, such as storage. I mean, how many times have we talked to our customers? We didn't, they go, Wow, I didn't know we had so much stuff. I don't know where we're gonna put everything. I don't. I'm mm -hmm. sure you. You know what I'm talking about, right, Dwight? You you've heard all that. Yeah, definitely. Why aren't we selling storage, right? Why aren't we selling something that gives us a monthly income? We you know month after month after month after month, right? If you look at all the big boys out there who are making billions and even up to trillions a month, they got monthly membership programs. They have subscriptions, Netflix, Apple Pay, Google, um, Amazon, you know, everybody's got a monthly membership program. Walmart's into the game now, right? Um, almost every single one of your stores has a monthly membership um, uh, program that you can join up with. Everybody's got this subscription service. And the reason why they do that is because it brings in guaranteed funds every month in and out. And it also improves cash flow and it improves the ability to scale faster. And we don't have, and mo most movers, almost all movers do not try to attempt to do storage. You know, when they say, hey man, I just don't know what they, no problem. We could, we got a six month program. We charge $150 for a 10 by 10 storage unit. We can put some of this in there until you're ready. Oh, really? Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? So are you saying after the move or are you saying... Um, after the move. Right? While they're on site or after they leave? Before they leave, before your movers leave, they should be trying to sell or your salespeople would call them on the phone and say, hey, look, you know, our movers said that you haven't, you know, that this is going to be overwhelming for you. Is there something we could do to store the stuff until you're ready for it? Gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. Right. And to go back to the failure, number one, one of the things that we could do that kind of ties in with this this monthly thing is we don't try to sell. Hey, I know this is overwhelming for you, but we can bring in a couple people to help you unpack and get rid of your the boxes and everything. Right. That's exactly. an extra three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, you, unpacking you, is definitely definitely something that needs to be utilized a lot more. Right. And all that all that does is, you know, you sell these adjacent services or you do the thing. What it does is that actually that pays for the expenses of the move, making the entire move 100 percent profit. Makes does sense. this make sense? Yeah. Failure number three is there is no attempt to sell further services. Right. We already talking about a little bit. Right. But um, and there's people go, but I don't know what I can sell. 
Well, stop being a weenie baby and be creative. <laughs> I mean, let's be, I just thought of like several different ideas right off the top of my head just a moment ago. You could sell unpacking services. You could sell um, house cleaning services of the old house and in the new house. You could sell uh, uh, trash removal or box removal, right? Um, you know, maybe they need a babysitter to so that they don't have kids running around while they're unpacking, or pet sitting services, offer a service or get somebody to do that. I mean, you could hire somebody very easily for, you know, $12, $15 an hour to babysit a dog for three or four hours or a kid for three or four hours so that they can unpack and not be overwhelmed and add an extra $100, $200 to your, to your, your bill. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that definitely does. Diversify for sure. Right. And the failure number four is there's no attempt to leave a pass along envelope with promo and coupons for your shippers to give out to their neighbors or their family or their friends. So there's no like little like sometimes when you go into some neighborhoods, some neighbor like some towns and neighborhoods have like a, a, a welcoming committee for new people who move into town and they give like these coupons to all the different businesses that are in town to encourage them to start, you know, visiting uh, the the local butcher or the local uh, barbecue place or the local Chinese restaurant, et cetera, or the mo local movie theater and so on, so on. Um, you could be doing something very similar to that when you say, hey, thanks for your move. We've got this, we've got this envelope for you. It contains a couple of passes, discount coupons that you can give out to family, friends, and neighbors. Here's some things for your neighborhood that might help you with in the neighborhood, like trash removal discounts, you know, photography discounts, whatever. You know, kids got, you know, people have got kids. They get yearly photographs for the school or they got kids that are going into seniors and need senior pictures or whatever. So, you know, if you build up these different, you know, people you could start giving these coupons and it's a way to say thank you and it really builds up the value and 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 and, and mentally these guys are going oh wow they did a great job plus they're giving me stuff <laughs> <laughs> makes sense makes sense now how would you do that with, with service such a wide area like how would you be able to keep it local well i mean you could do local but i mean if you know that you're gonna if you do a lot of jobs from let's say one town to another town you just start networking in that other town, right? So if you know that they're going to go, I'm I'm speaking here my locally. I'm in Lansing, so if I move somebody from Lansing to Grand Ledge, which is a just a town, there's a door about to open, so please forgive me. <laughs> um, if I know that someone's going to move to Grand Ledge, I would go to Grand Ledge or it's the 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 surrounding neighborhoods, and I would just start getting. Go to the local chamber of commerce or the uh, you know visitors bureau and start collecting these these different coupons and stuff, and now and joining their network groups as well, like okay. their B and I's or their you know their chamber of commerce meetings. And I'd be going and meeting with these people, and I would just it just forces you to get out there. Not only that, you're going to help, right? You're going to help those pe those businesses who will then give you more referrals. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Makes sense. Makes sense. What we're trying to do is create this referral monster. That's this perpetual referral machine. Right. And we'll go a little bit more into that in the, in the next few. Right. The next one, the next failure that all movers do. Oh, I just made some money from eBay. Pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next failure that people do is they make no attempt to get referrals after the job is done. These guys are happy. They've given you a referral. Maybe they, they've done a 30 second to a minute um, video for you. Um, they, they posed with you in front of your trucks, which is awesome. But then you don't go. So who else do you know who's moving? Who do you know in the, in the area that's going to be moving soon? Who's who is any family member going to be moving close to you? Right. Mm -hmm. They and uh, many times they're going to say no. I don't know anybody, but that gives you the excuse. No worries. Here's my envelope with some coupons in case you run into somebody. You know, here's some coupons that you can give to your neighbors and your friends. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Would you refer? Would you prefer like a what about a transferable gift certificate? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about when you get in this envelope. Okay. Right? 
right? You would give transferable things. So, hey, give this to your family, your friend, you know, Re and then put, make sure that they can put referred by Joe Blow. So when Joe Blow gives it to their family or friends and they turn that and the people turn that coupon in, you can see that Joe Blow referred you. Now you can send Joe Blow another little gift or maybe a small little, you know, $100 commission or something, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense. So there's no attempt to make referrals. Just none whatsoever. There's none. No one asks, hey, you know anybody else that's moving? You're happy. We did a good job. You know, who do you know that could use our services? Right. And yep. maybe they don't have somebody right then and there, but maybe when they start their new job or they go into the new school or meet the new moms and dads in the neighborhood, you know, somebody said, yeah, we're, you know, congratulations. Welcome to the th neighborhood. We don't know anybody. Then Joe Blow can give them that coupon. Says, you know what? I've got a great mover for you. Here's a coupon. They're going to give you 10% off or free boxes or whatever that is. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Right. Failure number six is there's no attempt to place, we are here moving your new neighbor, door hangers and bandit signs in the, in the lawn. Mm, interesting. Right? You, you see roofers do it. You see house painters do it. You see real estate agents do it. You see them put these little signs in to say, hey, their their house is roofed by X about roofers or whatever, right? How many movers do you know are putting bandit signs in the front lawn saying these guys used XYZ moving company? No. Do, do you think they'll keep it there after they moved or would you put it on their door or what? How would you do that? Maybe, maybe they won't. But I mean, if you go, but maybe they'll keep it there for a week. If you say, hey, can I put this bandit sign here? And, you know, a week, uh, sometime in the next week, I'll come pick it back up. Or you could throw it away, whatever your choice is. Gotcha. You know right. And there's also no, no one's taken or if failing that, you don't have to put a bandit sign. But you could go have like some, after the move, you know, go to the truck that's out in the road or whatever once they leave the premises they have a, a handful of little door hangers and they go around to the neighborhood especially the, the 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 houses that have for sale signs and put little door hangers saying hey xyz just moved your neighbor down the road they they loved it you know give us a try makes right? sense makes sense no I'm one is here. doing this no one is doing this whatsoever right and it's a great way to build. I mean, especially if you got a bunch of houses that have for sale signs. If they got a for sale sign. They're probably going to move once they sell the house. They're perfect. They're the perfect customer for you. Why are you knocking on their doors right after the move? They've seen your moving truck. You know, they've seen you you're working, and now they get a sign on the door. That's awesome. And right? hopefully a postcard. <laughs> What's that? And hopefully a postcard. Well, eventually a postcard down the road, but that would just be one more contact for them, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they got a postcard and then they saw your truck, but that's two That's two impressions. They typically need seven impressions before they go, oh, you know, boom, right? So you put a door hanger, or right? Or you put something in the in the windshield of the, of the car so that they get it, you know? Okay. You know? So that's actually a new new thing I never heard of. Um, you said seven impressions. Um, did you want to, could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah. In, in marketing, it takes seven impressions for your, you to be top of mind. Right. So they see a billboard, they see a, a sign on the, along the highway. They, they see yourself in the, on, on the internet, uh, an ad on the internet. They see a, a commercial, they see you on YouTube that takes seven impressions for your company to be top of mind. Right. So they get a cute, they get a postcard. That's only one impression. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. If they get a second postcard, that's a second impression. Right. Um, if they see a YouTube video with your company, that's a third impression. So the more impressions you, you get, get out there and they, you get out in front of the, the, the potential new customer, the more likelihood you're going to be chosen for that move. Right. Cause somebody who's got a house and they get a, postcard they're going to get several postcards from different moving companies not just going to be yours mm -hmm. right that's why i always advocate to get the biggest postcards you can get because most people are just doing these four by threes four by six postcards the really small ones they're not getting the 11 by six postcards right out there right that i when i did my postcards i sent the biggest postcard you can why because i wanted to make the the biggest and best impression right makes sense 
all my co all my competitors did just did these tiny little four by twos, four by three uh, uh, postcards, which they're great. But here I come with this big, massive thing that can fit <laughs> fit like six different of those postcards on it, right? Who do you think they're going to see first? They're going to pull that big one out and go boom, right? And yeah, I know that's a fact because I've had my customers say, "Yeah, your postcard was huge. I it was the first thing I saw." You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So, you know, yeah, they got other postcards, but they it's just when they get all these same postcards, it's just the same postcard and it just blurs, right? But then they get this big postcard and they're like, whoa, you see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, that's definitely my belief as well. I know like when I get those little Valvoline postcards or something like that, I'm quick to throw it out. But if I seen like the six by 11 postcards we're sending now, it's like, oh man, how, how can you throw it out? You're like, you're almost hesitant to want to read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they might still throw it out, but at least they're going to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's it's something that's going to impinge in their universe. So there, the, it takes seven impressions typically um, for, and you got to understand people's intention spans nowadays are, are shorter than a goldfish. A goldfish actually has longer attention spans than we do. You know, with the age of TikTok and Instagram reels and YouTube shorts, nobody wants to pay attention for much longer. All they're really looking for is that headline, right? Mm -hmm. So if you send a postcard with that headline and, you know, something that pops out, it's going to be. So that's what we're, we're going for, right? Okay. So the door hangers would just be another one impression that you would give to make sure that your postcard, your letters, whatever it is, gets seen. Okay. Makes sense. Right. Failure number seven that all movers make is they don't give a thank you note or card or gift after the move is done. I mean, it, it, a bottle of wine is five bucks. Is that really going to break you? You know, a bag of premium coffee from your favorite coffee house or coffee company is five bucks. Is that really going to break you? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a thing of donuts from, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme or whatever fa your favorite bakery. Is that really going to hurt you? But it's one way to say, hey, look, we care about you. We like you. We love you. Here's a gift. Thank you. Here's a housewarming gift. You give it. Plus, you give them the, 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 the little uh, envelope with all the, the stuff on it. Who are they going to remember when it comes time to move again? No, that makes sense. Right? No movers doing it. I have never, I, I failed in the first, I, I operated my company for nearly 15 years. For the first 12 years, I never did that. I started doing that. And I tell you what, my referrals and my repeat business picked up exponentially. Um, I think I don't have full stats on it. My stats are long gone because I haven't been in the moving business since 2019. But when I when I was starting to keep the statistics on it, I, I fought, saw that my repeat business and my repeat customers increased by almost 67.8%. Mm. Okay, okay. Just by doing like thank you, thank you, um, gratitude stuff. Whether did you do the wine that you mentioned? What's that? Did you do the wine that you mentioned? Like wine bottles? I didn't do wine. I did coffee or donuts and cookies and stuff. I did something cheaper. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, no, that makes sense. Wine. I'm just saying that's just an idea you could do. I just, mm -hmm. I didn't want to do wine because I didn't want it to get broken or something like that. Makes right. Sense. And then now they're suing me because I gave them a bottle of wine that their kid dropped off the counter and busted and, you know, cut themselves up. Yeah, yeah, customer. <laughs> you never know these days, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next, the the failure number eight is they fail you fail fail to get a kickback commissions or tell a friend cu coupons. And what I'm talking about is that you fail to do an affiliate program with a uh, companies adjacent to yours, right? Okay. You, you you fail to set up some sort of fit. Look, I'm going to refer people to you. I'm going to give them coupons, but I want a little bit of sugar on the, on the backside, <laughs> right? And there's a, a bunch of different affiliate programs that you could also do. There's Bed Bath & Beyond. There's Amazon affiliate. There's Walmart affiliates. There's affiliates for all major box stores, big box stores that you can sign up for, that you can refer them to, right? That they could sign up for. There's 
there's a uh, phone services that you could get. You know, you could sign up as an affiliate. So if they sign up with T-Mobile versus Verizon, or you could get a Verizon and 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 get them to do that, right? So if you you connect up with it, you could get like these affiliate programs, and that brings back, um, you know, that when you refer the these adjacent uh, companies, you can get money back as a little bit of a kickback, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. So if I, for instance, if I were going to refer somebody to your, your services, to your, your educational programs, which are amazing programs, right? I would set up with you and say, hey, you know, Dwight, you know, I'm going to refer people to you. I'm going to send people to you. But anybody that signs up with you, I want a 10% commission or, you know, or whatever, whatever you guys agree to. Mm -hmm. right? You know, I've actually got some, uh, I've got some of those agreements now. I, I've got agreements with on cue i've got agreements with move it pro i've got live switch i get affiliate uh commissions when i refer people right now i don't get a lot of i don't get a lot of re commissions individually from each one of those companies but when i get a bunch of those companies and they're giving me things then that adds up that accumulates that makes sense and while you're on that topic, um, it was just announced today. Um, you and you and myself made top seven influencers in the moving industry. I did. Yes. Really? Where's this? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's on Facebook, um, and LinkedIn and stuff like that. So, um, I'll share the link with you after the fact. That would be amazing because I did not. I'm in the top seven. Am I number one? Well, I didn't think they put a, a number count to it, but you know, we're with. Some really good and um influencers on the industry. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, that's see now, see now that's you giving me love, right? And um, and I I didn't ask for it. You did. You just did it. See now that you, you by doing that and saying, hey, I'm going to share this link with you. I can now promote that, and then I can then prom give you some love. By sending people to you. See how that works? It's reciprocal. Exactly. See, you did it on your own free will and, and good, right? But now I'm going to be like, wow, I can use that as uh, like marketing or promo. I can put that on, you know, for to sell my service that I'm one of the top seven influencers in the moving industry. You know what I mean? That's a big deal. You know, until to my future customers, they're going to look at that and go, wow. But let's let's take that down to a granular thing for movers. If you did that same love by giving them notes and stuff like that, or you did it to a move a, a businesses adjacent, you started doing that to adjacent businesses, they're going to be, wow, look at this. He's sending me all these referrals. They're going to want to reciprocate. Definitely. You see what I'm saying? So there's that. That's the whole thing. And I mean, there's a bunch of books that talk about that. It's like how to win, how to make friends and influence people. There's, you know, all these books that talk about that being reciprocal, the secret, there's all these talk about give, 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 right? It's all, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about giving, 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 and, and then then you can get some re reciprocal love you can give. Exactly. Table, right? He's got an entire book called Jab, 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 Right Hook, which is all about give, 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 and then ask, right? No, that makes sense. Definitely. You doing this, you doing this, uh, this uh, video with me, you know, I get nothing out of it. You didn't pay me. I'm not paying you. Right. You did. You asked me to do it. That's something that I'm going to think I'm going to in my back of my mind. Well, Dwight did this for me. He's helping promote seven figure moving Academy. Right. And, you know, I can then promote my membership by going seven figure moving Academy dot co slash membership. <laughs> See how it did there. Right. <laughs> And people could go and join the membership. And now I'm going to go, you know what? That came from Dwight. I'm going to send Dwight a little commission. I'm going to send Dwight a, a, a gift, right? Or whatever it is. I'm going to reciprocate. Or I'm going to say, you know what? Sign up for Dwight's uh, educational programs. Learn how to sell. Learn how to uh, onboard people, you know? And you're going to go, oh, okay, good. And then it becomes mutual, right? Definitely, definitely. And then will I think about somebody who's not going to give give me any love? No. Right? You gave me love, so I'm going to give you love. Right? And then if somebody comes in and goes, Jay, we want you to refer us. Well, what have you done for me? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I hate yeah. to be selfish, but that's the way the world works. Let's be honest. Yeah. And I think for me, it's kind of like 
I'm the same way that you just mentioned, where it's kind of like I want to give, 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 refer, refer, refer to people that specialize in what they specialize in. But then it comes down to the point where you had that conversation with them and they're just like, um, they don't want to mention you. And you're just like, oh, okay, you know, but in my heart, I'm still going to do it because it's just who I am. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's do number nine. Failure number nine. There is no once a month email news network with news, funny stories, or more importantly, affiliate programs. We already talked about affiliate programs. There's no one say, uh, saying, hey, you want to decorate your house? Go to Bed Bath yeah, & Beyond. They got this cute little mirror or they've got this nice little thing that they're promoting, right? There's no affiliate programs, with st big box stores, local stores, online services like fitness, business, relationships, right? There's a bunch of affiliate programs that you you've now got an, a, a captive audience that you could refer to them every single month, right? Okay. And there's you send them a monthly email letter to them that you segmentize. So you segment to us between the homeowners to the apartment people to the storage people, and you're doing so that you're sending the right if the right value in the email that's going to help benefit their life. Now, if you're just sending emails like "Look at me, look at me, look at me," people are going <laughs> to unsubscribe and get rid of you. That's that does nothing for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're sending out email newsletters and say, hey, you know, here's some great, here's something that's happening in your neighborhood, right? There's a, a parade that's going to happen at three o'clock on a Friday night to celebrate St. Patty's Day. You should be there. We're going to be in the parade. We'd love to see you there. Come say hi. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, you know, here's how you help curb appeal. Or here's here's my grandma's favorite recipe for um uh, I don't know, collard greens or something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Here, here, here's, here's a, I want to share my, my family's secret recipe with you. Right. That, that, that's value. You know, people then go, Oh, we're, we're friends. We've got a relationship, right? You're going to share news about your family. You're going to share news about your business. You're going to give them testimonials. But at the same time, you're going to give, give, give all this great information. You're going to be, because if we're friends, you're going to know all about me and I want to know all about you, correct? Right. Right? So, I mean, you know, so you want to foster that relationship with an email newsletter. But in that email newsletter, you should also be promoting things that you can make a commission on, like Bed Bath & Beyond or Walmart. Walmart's having a great sale. They're doing a, a you know, a 50% off of clearance sale or something or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you give them a link to Walmart, they go and buy it. Guess what? You get a commission off of whatever they buy in Walmart or Amazon or whatever it is, right? It's all the stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. Or, you know, we're we're in tax season. Send them an, a, an affiliate link to your favorite tax service. You know, get your taxes done to TurboTax or H&R Block or whatever it is. You know what I mean? No, that's that's definitely an issue um, with the referral to the tax, tax return service. Yeah. So there is there is that. Now, that's nine. Now, here's my bonus one. It's the 10th failure that all mover companies do, and not one mover company is doing it. And I've said it in my videos many, many times, and I don't know why people aren't doing it. Um, and it, to me, it's, it's the, one of the dumbest things you can do. And if you want to create a perpetual referral machine that just drives in droves of money, that makes you hundreds, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars, you've got to drive in referrals. You got to bring in referrals. So how do you make a how do you make it someone who never ever heard of you, doesn't know who you are? How do you make them to be on your side to make you make you their best friend? Like they're going to refer you no matter what, right? Over over the the franchise companies and so on. So who are, who are, how are you going to do that? Well, it's simple. If you do a great job, you're going to ask for a referral. I mean, for a testimonial, yeah. right? And now you're going to say, hey, can you give me a testimonial? And they're like, yeah, sure. And you go, great, here's my postcard. And on the postcard, it has a QR code. They scan the QR code. It takes them to Facebook. It takes them to Google. It takes them to Yelp or whatever. But better, better than that, right, Better than that is if you do uh, take your phone, right? Mm -hmm. you take your phone and you do um, a video testimonial. Say, hey, look, can you? Would you be willing to, to give me a video testimonial, right? 
And it doesn't, it could be as long as you want, you know, try to make it at least 10 seconds, 10 to 30 seconds long if you can, right? But whatever you want to say, you said, I'm not going to influence you, please do it. And that's what I used to do. I used to use what was called a flip camera. I don't know if you saw, remember those back in the day, they're about the size of a cell phone, right? Mm -hmm. And basically it, you turn that camera and you just hit a button. It was just, just a couple of buttons and you just hit the record button, right? But the reason why they call it a flip camera is that you hit another button and a, a USB port would pop out and you could take that camera and plug it right into your computer via the USB. And I used to do that. And I used to take, and I, I had a bunch of these cameras and I would give like one camera to every single crew that was out there. I say, go get me video testimonials, right? <laughs> you have to train your crew how to do them correctly, right? So that yeah. they're done correctly. But um, you, your crew would love to do it, right? And you, the, how you tell get your crew to get them is you say, look, if you give me a video testimonial, I get a bonus. And if you mention our uh, mention all the other movers, they get a bonus too, right? And you give and you give them a bonus, make it true, right? Because I gave my guys bonuses that incentivized them to do it. So you have them do it on a on a phone that you can give them a phone to go do it, right? Or they could do it on their own phone and they could upload it to you. However, it gets done. It get you know, but take that video. And then what you're going to do is you're going to edit the video slightly, right? Because you want to make sure that, and you want it the video to be like this, right? Vertical, right? You don't want it to be landscape. You want it to be portrait. And the reason why we do portraits is because that's what everybody, it used to be in the day you do horizontal, you do landscape, mm -hmm. but you don't want to do landscape anymore because everybody's virtual. You, you know, TikTok, uh, Instagram Reels, Facebook, YouTube Shorts are all vertical these days. Wow. Right. So you want to do it vertically. So you want to do a video that's vertical and you want to do it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to edit the video just to make sure that it's cleaned up a little bit. You're going to spread that all over. You're going to spread it to TikTok, spread it to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube shorts, every every place that does video. Twitter does videos these days. You're going to give it, put it on Twitter. Right. But more importantly, you're going to take that video and you're going to send a small email to their realtor, their mortgage broker, their home appraiser, their, you know, um, cleaning company, their, um, anybody in adjacent that that helped them move to, from one location, their apartment manager from and to locations, right? And you're going to send that video. Here's what your customer, here's what Joe Blow, your, your, uh, you, you, the home buyer from, you know, if it's a real estate, if it's an apartment manager, here's what your former tenant used to said about XYZ moving company. Right mm -hmm. now. And after the first video, they're going to see the video and they go, wow, these XYZ did a great job. Maybe that doesn't persuade them to start referring to you. But if you do that three, four, five times down the road, guess what? That's now going to create this perpetual um, referral machine. Right. And if you do it to the mortgage broker, their apartment managers, you know, both from the places they moved from to the places they moved to, everybody that's had anything to help them move, right? Yeah. You're going to send that to. Them. Now you're going to get you're going to get referrals. So how do you get their names? Well, you're going to ask who is your who is your real estate agent? Who did you get who who did you uh uh who did you get a mortgage? And if so, who who did your mortgage? Right? Who is your home appraiser? Who who's the who is the manager at your former uh, apartment complex? Who's so the how, manager? Here? How would you how would you do that without being so invasive? I guess and I know that's kind of pressuring. Yeah. You you just do it in the you would just train your guy, especially your crew leader, to do it in the matter of speaking in the matter of of a conversation. Wow, this is a really nice house. You guys did a good job. Did you? Who was your who? You know, I'm looking to buy a house potentially down the road who is your mortgage broker <laughs> makes sense you know who did you get who 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 did the title insurance you know you know that definitely makes sense that could that could be doable yeah it just you just bring it up in a natural conversation you're not going to start grilling who is your mortgage broker who is your you know <laughs> yeah, you're going to bring it up in conversation okay right? you're going to train your crew leader to bring up these make these casual comments like hey i might be thinking about moving to a new apartment it was a good did you have a good experience at the uh, at your former apartment complex yeah yeah we liked it there it was just you know, i had to move for a job okay good 
Who's the manager? Right? May, I might want to talk to him. Oh, here, this manager was blah, blah, blah. Talk to Joe. Oh, thanks a lot, man. And then the crew leader goes out and he makes a little note on, on a pad of paper of who, who who the manager was and what the apartment complex is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. Okay. So what do you call, you said this was called what? The 10 failures that moving companies are making? Yeah, 10 failures that every moving company makes. Ten. Okay, okay. Now you do these, you implement what I just talked to you. You start doing what I tell you to do and start, I mean, you don't have to do every single one of these 10, but you should be do, trying to do all of them, right? If you do it, you're going to find you have better referrals. You're going to make more money and you're not going to have to worry about the dreaded slow season, mm. right? It's oh. the slow season is still going to happen. But if you're doing, if you're doing monthly, month to month storage, you're doing affiliates, you're going to be bringing money in from other areas, other uh, income streams. That so that's going to keep you liquid. It's going to cap, keep you with a high cash flow, and it's going to allow you to keep your people on instead of laying them off or firing them during the winter time. Yep, that makes sense. And storage is supposed to, if you do it right, it's supposed to cover your overhead, so you don't have to worry about rent and all the electric bills, all that fun stuff. And you know, at that point, hey, the the extra money that you're bringing in from your moves is just is just that. <laughs> exactly exactly so these are 10 failures that you could stop you can not that now that you know that they are stop doing them right and start implementing a program um go to dwight's program he's got he'll teach you how to create systems that will put the systems in place for you to do these programs there and making systems is not really hard and if you have you know uh, i'll also offer my services to uh, you, you could come to Seven Figure Moving Academy. You could uh, come to the group, and the group will help you out as well. But I definitely encourage you to get with Dwight's programs, his training programs, and learn stuff and learn how to systemize your business so you can put this in your business and start making the money so that you never have to worry about money. And I guarantee you, you start doing these, you start implementing these ten things, that you're going to outrank your customer, your com comp your direct competition because they're not doing it. Exactly. The help is out there, everyone. You know, whether, again, you come to my mentor program, you know, obviously in our mentor program, we go over finance. So knowing your numbers, being more liquid to, you know, operations training, to sales training, to training your teams. You know, the training is out there and Jay has so much training on just on his channel alone. But, you know, I'm sure that, you know, in his seven figure moving academy, he's definitely killed it in there as well. So, you know, you don't have to be paying all these thousands and thousands of dollars for material of courses out there to learn something if you're just starting in the industry or if even if you've been in the industry long enough. You know, um, it's going back to the fundamentals. And the here's, fundamentals what, here's what I want to do, Dwight, for your people. Um, anybody that signs up and, and your mentorships or does any of your courses and they mentioned this video with the, the code word, 10 failures, they got to give you the code 10 failures and mention this video. If they sign up with your stuff, you'll send, all, all I need you to do is send me their, that they signed up and they mentioned 10 failures. I'm going to send you my complete, uh, my complete library of kits that I have. It includes the sales kit, the marketing kit, the hiring kit, the legal documents and waivers kit contains all the ebooks that I have written and, and I've accumulated. It's the entire thing. I sell this on my website for $1,500. I'm going to send it completely to you 100% free. If you sign up with DeWitt's mentorship program and um, or any of his courses and you give Dwight the code 10 failures, right? It, he's not going to do it. If you, you do the video and you say, and you just mentioned the video. Nope, you got to give the code 10 failures. So that means you would have to have listened to the end of this video to get that code. And I'm just doing this is off the top of my head. So if they do it, Dwight, you just send me a text message, an email or whatever. Give me their information and I will I will send them my my complete uh, toolkits for them. Yep. So that means I got to watch this video because. Ah, I'm, I'm getting jealous right now um, with, with, with that content, you know. So at the end of the day, if y'all if y'all not watching the video and y'all didn't see the code, you know, I'm not posting it down below. So, you know, at the end of the day, Dre, thank you for, for all of that. Um, did you want to say anything before we close out? 
No, I think that was it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Hopefully the people will take it. I have not shared this outside of my Facebook group. So this is just between you and me. So hopefully they could uh, they could apply some of the stuff and, and really start making some good money. Awesome. Awesome. All right, everybody. So definitely like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, again, this is Jay Burnham from Seven Figures Movement Academy. Go out there and crush it. All right, everybody. Take care.